Good afternoon, everyone. OK, good. Uh, my name is Rachid Dayal, and I run a Google Analytics company in Singapore called Happy Marketer. We help companies manage, install, and make the best use of Google Analytics. I have come all the way from Singapore to talk to you today. I woke up and took a cab to the airport, took the air Asia flight, made that long walk from LCCT to the immigration terminal. You don't sound impressed. <laughs> I know it's not as impressive as uh, John coming down from California, but I'm still excited. And I'm excited because I like to measure things. Now, in fact, I'm obsessed with measuring things. Now, if you're, if you're a kid and you're obsessed with something, they say you have a disease like ADD and ask you to go outside and play. If you're old and you're obsessed with something, they say you have OCD and they give you another set of pills. But right now, for the marketers in this room, being obsessed is an awesome quality. Because every business that we're working for, that we're working with, wants to measure exactly what's going on. Because all of us are spending a lot of time with this, sending traffic to our website in many different ways. Now, between your offline campaigns and your email and your search and social, all of these things drive traffic back. But do you know exactly what the ROI in each of these things is? Ideally, what you want is exact numbers to each of these mediums. You want to see how much traffic it contributes, how many conversions it brings. Google Analytics can measure all these things for you. In fact, it can do a lot more. As you just saw, not only will it tell you how many direct conversions your email campaign brought you, it'll even tell you how many assists the email campaign made. Right? So you can have a very complex picture and a really rich view of how all the different marketing you're doing is working with each other to bring by conversions. As you just heard John say, in, 2000, in 2012, in order to start tracking these conversions and to start enabling this multi-channel funnels, should be your number one goal. But for this to work, what you have to do is you have to start tagging your URLs. When you send traffic in different ways back to your website, you have to be able to tell Google Analytics a little bit more campaign information so it can give you all this rich data. And here's how that works. Let's say you're running a display ad campaign on Yahoo. What you do is when you send traffic back from Yahoo, you use a slightly customized URL, slightly customized website address. And in this customization is all the information Google Analytics needs to start tracking what this campaign is about. Similarly, if you have a campaign on Twitter or email marketing or any other medium, all you have to do is slightly different URLs go out to each of these mediums. Okay? And I know if you've never done this before, this looks really daunting. Um, so let me walk you through what's on those URLs behind the question mark. Okay? So there are five variables that are put behind every URL. The first one is called source. Source is the place you're sending traffic back from. So if you're, if you're doing a campaign on Facebook, your source is Facebook. If you're doing a campaign on Twitter, your source is Twitter. Right? Uh, if you're doing a campaign, let's say a display ad campaign on New York Times or another website, then your source becomes that particular website. The next variable that Google Analytics URL tagging needs is called medium. Now, medium is the big channel to which that source belongs. Okay? So there are a couple of different popular options for medium. If you're doing paid advertising where you're paying cost per click, then a possible medium would be CPC. If you're doing display or banner advertising, then a possible medium would be display. If you're doing email marketing, then your medium there is email. Right? Make sense? Wake up. Come on. All right. The third variable is called campaign. Campaign is the unique name that you give to that campaign. So let's say you're running some ads and you're running some promotions for your Christmas campaigns later in the year. The name of that campaign will be Christmas. Okay? So those are the three main compulsory variables, source, medium, and campaign. Apart from this, there are two optional variables. One is called keyword. Keyword is used only for search campaigns. And ad content is used when you have multiple versions of creatives going out. So you can differentiate how each of those creative versions perform. Okay, I know I've lost most of you at this point, so let's see how to use these variables. Okay? Let's say you run a cat food website, okay? and your marketing strategy is making cute videos of kittens playing with stuff, and that's how you sell cat food. We all know YouTube is 50% cat videos. Right? So you're doing this campaign, and you're pushing some cute new video out on Twitter. What you do is you take your standard landing page, and you add a little bit more information to it. 
So then your landing page becomes a little bit more complex. You can see there are three variables at the back of this. There's one for source, one for medium, and one for campaign. Okay? And because you've done this, suddenly Google Analytics knows everything about this new medium. And when you go back and you look at your reports, you can get a lot of analysis and a lot of insight from looking at this particular traffic set. And in fact, Google Analytics has a really cool tool called the URL Builder. You can Google it. Uh, it's number one on Google for URL builder, and that'll help you build those um, tagged URLs. Now, it'll help you build the tagged URLs, but you still have to decide what words and what phrases you use. Okay? So let's go through a couple of scenarios of how you use URL tagging in real life. So let's take the first scenario, which is search ads. If you search advertising on Google or Yahoo or Bing or one of the smaller search engines. Okay? A couple of points here. Number one, your organic search engine traffic is automatically tracked. You don't need to do anything to tag that. Google automatically knows which keywords send traffic from which search engine. Right? Um, Google AdWords also integrates pretty well into analytics. So if you have enabled that, that integration, you don't need extra URL tagging there. So let's see how to fill out those variables with search ads. So for the first variable, which is source, what you want to do is you want to use the word that describes that particular search engine. So you probably want to use Yahoo or Bing or Indeed or any other one, any one of the other search engines that you're using to drive traffic to the site. Um, quick tip here: exclude HTTP, exclude www. Just use a simple explanatory name. Yeah. For medium, what you want to do is you want to use the word CPC, and this works really well because then you can see your Yahoo CPC traffic along with your Google CPC traffic. And then if you're doing Bing advertising, you can do CPC traffic with that. So all of your CPC advertising gets collected in this one bucket that you can drill down into. So you get a holistic view of how CPC does against email and other sorts of things. Next, for campaign, you want to use the name of the campaign that you're pushing out right then. If you're using Yahoo or Bing, you can also use variables for a number of these things. So if you're using Yahoo, for example, you can use the variable YSM Camp GID and that automatically pulls the ID of the campaign. You can use the variable YSM key, and that automatically pulls in the keyword that's used to drive the traffic. Okay. If, you're, if you're rapidly jotting down notes, don't worry about this. These slides are available after this presentation. Okay. Um, so once you've done this, your tag URL looks something like this. Yoursite.com, blah, blah, blah. Source, Yahoo MY, medium CPC, and then campaign and term information. And in your final reports, you'll be able to see this Yahoo MY traffic separately. So you'll be able to see how many people came over, how many pages they saw, what their bounce rate was, what their conversion rate was, all the metrics you can compare that particular medium with activity on the site, engagement on the site. Okay? That's search ads. Let's talk about display ads. So for display ads, what you want to do is for source, use the name of the category or the name of the site that you're advertising on. For medium, um, we're trying to standardize on the word display. Okay, so use the word display. For campaign, you can just give it whatever campaign name you want. You don't need to use the keyword tag. And for the ad content, uh, you can either identify it if you have a lot of creatives, or you can just leave it out. And when you tag your URLs like this, it looks something like this. So it has the source information, the medium, and the campaign name. And when you go back and you look at your reports later on, you can see all the different banner campaigns that I've done, they're all listed out. And you can get some really insightful information, like that particular campaign, the Yahoo banner campaign did a lot worse than the Hardware Zone campaign. Okay, now, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying Hardware Zone is great and Yahoo's bad. But that's what happened in this particular campaign. And you can do this kind of analysis on your campaigns. Let's talk about social media. So one cool thing about social media is when you put complicated URLs out, you know, in social media, every URL is automatically shortened. You get bit.ly slash something or go.gl slash something because you have you know, only 140 characters in Twitter. What that does is when you have these complicated arguments at the back of the URL, the URL shortener hides them all away. Okay, so users are more likely to click on those shortened URLs, and the user experience isn't bad for them. So use a URL shortener to mask the whole thing. Make sure you send out different URLs to different traffic mediums. When you tweet about an article and when you post it on Facebook, 
use slightly different URLs so that you can see exactly what impact each of those mediums had. Right? And so for source, what you want to do is just use the name of the site, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever it is you're pushing that content on. For medium, just use the word social. For the campaign name, um, give it a creative name. So for cat food video, maybe it's called the ice cream video because the kitten was playing with ice cream or something. Give it something that you can identify later on. You don't use keyword, and for ad content, if you like, you can use it. If you don't, you can skip it. And when you tag your URLs like this, they look something like this, with a source, medium, and campaign information. And in your final reports, this is, these are actual reports from the Fairmont Hotel. And you can see that they've split out the social media traffic separately from organic referral and CPC. And you can measure exactly how many pages per visit happen with each of them. You can see whether the social engagement campaign is working or not. And what's really cool is if you look at the graphic below, you'll see that Twitter slash social media, which is the company's pushed out content, is tracked separately from Twitter slash referral, which is people automatically tweeting by themselves. So you can actually measure on social media how much impact your pushing is having and how much impact it's having that users actually like and push their content themselves. Can, you can do some really cool analysis like this. Right? So URL tagging is not very complex. It looks simple. Well, it looks simple for one URL. When you're managing a whole organization and you have to tag a whole bunch of URLs, it gets a little bit complex. So here are some quick tips to remember as you go through your organization. Number one, assign just one central person to do all the URL tagging. If you're in this room, that means that's you. Raise your hand, volunteer yourself, and lead the URL tagging process, because somebody needs to be the evangelist within the organization to start tracking all these things. Number two, as part of your job as an evangelist, educate the different marketing teams that this is possible. Once different teams who are doing your paid ads and your search ads know that you can actually track the performance on the site, they will come, with you, they'll come to you and they will beg to tag their URL so that they can see the actual performance. Number three, tag everything you can right now. Okay? In the beginning, it'll help you get the hang of the process of how variables fill out, where the data shows up. And later on, you'll find hidden gems of information that you didn't know existed. Okay? So three simple tips. Be the central manager that tags this stuff. Educate your different marketing teams and tag everything you can. Okay? Being a, a tagging superhero in your organization is not tough. You get to wear tights and a red shawl at the back. Uh, but apart from that, you don't need to be a webby, you don't need to be a techie. Anybody can do this, right? Um, but you have to do this consistently because it takes a while to train your organization to do this properly, okay? Um, one quick thing, right at the bottom you see a URL called happymarketer.com slash go measure. That's where these slides are. So in case you were making notes, you can download them later. Um, we at Happy Marketer help do this stuff for our clients all the time. So we work with some of the leading brands in the region, brands that you recognize, and you've probably used some of our work in the past. And we help do trainings, setup, troubleshooting, tagging, all of this stuff. So anything we can help with. If you walk away from here, just remember a couple of quick things. Number one, start tagging your campaigns. Okay? You have to get in the hang of this, start tagging your first campaign to start seeing data and gain some confidence. Number two, I bet you have a lot of questions, so tweet. Tweet and use the hashtag go measure so that later on in the day we can answer your questions. And number three, download these slides, keep them for reference, and look over them regularly. Thank you guys very much.